Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll get started in just a minute. Uh, if you see part of the YouTube live feature is the chat feature here. Uh, so feel, please feel free to start. Uh All right, so we're going to get started here uh, just with some announcements as folks start to uh, trickle in. I want to say good morning. Uh, welcome to everyone. I hope you've had a good week so far uh, and that your family is staying healthy uh, and staying safe as well. Um, a few updates around Evergreen Valley. You know, we are finishing up uh, just about a month of distance learning so far. Um, and marking period five progress reports will be released soon. Um, so one of the things I wanted to touch on about distance learning was that March 13th grade floor. Um, what a lot of folks know, and, and we've sort of communicated this out and try to communicate it out as much as possible. Um, and there's all sorts of conversations we can talk about today about uh, pass, no pass versus the grade floor. Um, I do think the grade floor is the better, better choice. Um, in any event, uh, students' grades are frozen as they were on March 13th. Um, and what we wanted to have is an official record of that March 13th uh, grade floor. Uh, so uh, what we are doing is for uh, marking period five. Uh, marking period five is the, um, the progress reports that are gonna be coming soon. That is gonna be the March 13th grade floor grade. Uh, so the grade that you see on the progress reports for your students' classes uh, is going to be the marking period five uh, grade four grade. That grades cannot go lower than that. They can only go up. Um, so keep that in mind uh, as you see that progress report, uh, that that's what that progress report grade means. Um, do remember, folks, that there is a chat here uh, that you are able to access. So please feel free to, um, to access the chat and ask any questions that you may have. Let me just check right now to make sure it's toggled on. Uh, otherwise, someone say good morning uh, just to see if we can check. All right, so I see a bunch of you there, but I'm not seeing anyone in the chat. So let's check uh, the nuts and bolts on it and see if it's working. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm seeing folks. Good, good, good. Okay, good morning. Uh, it was a little weird just talking to myself uh, for a minute. All right, great to see everyone. Good morning, good morning. Uh, please feel free uh, to ask questions if you have them. Um, so yeah, in any event, the March, 15, uh, the March 13th grade floor will be on the progress reports that you have. Um, your student's grade won't be able to fall any lower from what that grade floor is. It can only go up. A um, Couple other updates, the student union, uh, we've talked about it before uh, at our coffee chats. Uh, basically that is a bond project. So that was on the ballot uh, a few years ago. It's construction money, so it can only be used for construction, uh, not for staff. But that project is uh, still going along. It's considered essential work. Uh, so we've been able to add a fire hydrant uh, on the inside of campus uh, in preparation for the student union construction that will likely start uh, summer of uh, 2021. Uh, there's also a lot of work going on in the parking lots uh, right now. So they have made the islands uh, before they were kind of long. They've narrowed the islands and made them a bit thinner. Uh, and the idea around that was to uh, try to allow cars to have easier access and to go through and to make it the new front of the school. So that work has been happening as well, as well as taking down the uh, bus loading zone in the student parking lot. Um, we do have designs that are beginning to get finalized uh, that we'll be sharing with our school site council at their next meeting. Uh, but it's exciting that the construction is still happening. And the silver lining of our school closure is that, um, you know, the construction can be 
uh, done when students are not present. So of course, you know, by 20, summer of 2021, uh, we should have students back on campus, but it's nice that some of these smaller projects can be completed, um, you know, before that time. Uh, I have a couple more announcements, but please feel free to add your questions uh, into the chat and I will go through them. So feel free to add some questions uh, as we go on. Uh, graduation. Uh, so I know that's on the minds of a lot of our senior families. So we've been looking at a lot of different options for uh, graduation. There's not a final decision yet uh, that's been made, but I can share with you uh, some of the different options that we're looking at uh, and sort of are thinking of how we're thinking about graduation. Um, so I guess first off, we're looking for the best celebration and ceremony that we can have uh, for our senior students. Uh, you know, our seniors, they're incredibly resilient uh, and they have a lot of grit that they've been able to persist uh, through these difficulties as um, one of the only, uh, I think, uh, classes in American history, uh, I think, that, to be put in this situation. So we really want to send our seniors off uh, in style. Um, and we're looking at a few different options. One is a virtual graduation. Uh, a virtual graduation, uh, essentially what you would have is you'd have videos. So it, it would be kind of like a movie. Uh, so at the beginning, you'd have my speech and maybe the speech from the superintendent and the board members um, and then the ASB class officers. And then you would have a procession where students uh, would have their photo, uh, you know, their name, any honors that they had, um, and then potentially a 20 second video of them sort of sharing with the class uh, and sharing with everyone, uh, just sort of a message uh, from them. Um, all of it would be moderated. Uh, so of course we'd make sure that it's appropriate as well. Uh, and then it would be produced and shared with students and families and it would be able to be downloaded as well. Um, now you notice with the virtual graduation, there is no uh, in-person uh, component to that. Uh, and so if the social distancing guidelines, uh, you know, remained uh, sort of strict and in place, uh, you know, for the next few months, that is an option that we're looking at uh, potentially doing. Now, another option that we're looking at graduation is to have some sort of modified in-person ceremony. Uh, and we're looking at a few different options for this. Um, you know, we want to have it so that families have that photo opportunity and can see their student, uh, you know, walk the stage in some way. Uh, and we also want it to be accessible and to be nice, something that uh, students enjoy. Uh, so we're looking at uh, the drive-in as a possibility, the drive-in movie theater, where families could uh, drive in, uh, watch it on the big screen as their student gets out of the car and sort of walks across the stage. Uh, one other option that we're looking at is um, the Berryessa Flea Market, uh, which is a gigantic plant, uh, which is just a, um, a ton of parking spots and a ton of parking lots. And the idea would be is that we would set up a stage uh, and kind of have a drive through graduation where families would come in cars uh, and they'd be able to watch through cars and then the cars would drive up. The graduate would get out, uh, come across the stage, get their diploma, stop and smile for a picture, uh, you know, while pomp and circumstance played. So it's definitely going to be different, you know, either if we do the virtual graduation or if we do the in-person modified sort of drive-through graduation. Um, but our focus is really having a, a good experience for our sen seniors uh, and giving them something that they can re uh, remember. I, I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, we're not going to have any graduations in May. So the May 28th uh, date that we originally had, uh, you know, that's probably not going to happen. It'll probably be June or later. Um, but keep that in mind. We will share that uh, when it becomes available. Uh, we are hoping, I think, to do a more in-person ceremony. Um, but we may end up doing virtual depending on what the social distancing uh, guidelines look like. Um, I also want to let you know for our seniors uh, as well, um, you know, in-person senior honor night was canceled, um, but uh, Ms. Guban in the counseling office uh, is working on uh, putting together a virtual uh, senior honor night as well. Uh, so we anticipate that uh, being released to students around the same time as the in-person honor night would have been, uh, which would have been May 25th. Uh, so that's just another thing we're trying to do with for our seniors, um, just to make it seem like they have a special uh, you know, sending off as well. They worked hard over the past four years uh, at Evergreen Valley. And so we really want them, uh, you know, to be honored and to receive awards as well. Uh, so the Senior Honor Night will be virtual uh, and that should be coming towards the end of May. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, prom. Uh, so Senior Prom, unfortunately, was canceled. Uh, students will be refunded uh, for their tickets. So we had been going back and forth with the Marriott uh, for a while when, um, you know, the shelter-in-place guidelines uh, were first uh, being released. 
uh, and asking for a refund. And we're finally able to get them to agree uh, to process our refund. Uh, they're going to mail the check uh, to us. Uh, and then once we receive the funds from the Marriott, uh, we're gonna cut checks to students and mail them to students' homes. Uh, so students will be refunded uh, for prom tickets. Uh, we know who you are, we know who bought them uh, and at what price. Uh, and so those checks will be mailed home. Uh, I don't believe we received the check uh, from the Marriott as uh, yet, uh, but once we get that check, it'll probably be a week and a half or two weeks or so before we process the checks uh, to be mailed. Uh, but they are coming uh, for prom refund. Uh, and then lastly, my last real announcement, and please feel free to add questions onto the right because uh, I'm going to transition to questions here in a minute. Uh, my last announcement that I really had was um, about fall semester. So, you know, we still have some questions about this uh, school year that folks are asking, and please keep them coming. Uh, but we're also starting to get questions about next school year as well um, from our parents, from our students, and of course from, uh, from principals and from uh, staff members as well. So the simple answer for fall semester is we don't know yet uh, what school uh, will look like. Uh, I can tell you the first day of school is August 11th. Uh, that is the same. So there's not been any adjustment to the calendar uh, for the 2021 uh, school year. So we do anticipate opening on August 11th. Now, how we open, though, will be based off of um, the public health guidelines from the governor's office and from the county as well. So there's already been in education circles, we've been having these conversations about, uh, you know, what would sort of a socially distance high school of uh, over 2,900 students look like. And of course, that brings up challenges for us, uh, given the size of our campus and also how dense uh, our campus is packed. So we're going to have to wait and see what the social distancing guidelines are. Some ideas, though, I can share with you so, you know, you're not surprised. Things that our district is discussing, but things that also is being discussed at the state level uh, and by education professionals. So we're looking at, and some options being considered are maybe going on a staggered schedule. So maybe you have half the campus come on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, half on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then you flip weeks and you alternate weeks. So that way you only have half of the campus on campus at any given time. Uh, so less opportunity for there to be spread. Uh, so that's one option. Uh, another option is that you have all students come, but you only do it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then have distance learning on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. And then that also allows the custodians to deep clean campus on the days that uh, students aren't there as well. Uh, so that's another uh, possibility. Uh, another possibility could be staggered schedule as for time of day. So maybe you have half of the campus come uh, from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock, and then the other half of campus come from 12 uh, to 3 uh, in terms of students so that you minimize the number of students on campus uh, during that time. Uh, potentially looking at modifying the bell schedule. Uh, this is block schedule. Uh, so know that Evergreen did not vote to uh, officially move to a block schedule for next school year. Uh, but given the emergency situation, uh, the district uh, may choose uh, to do that to minimize the amount of time that students are transitioning and in the hallways and close to each other. Uh, so that's a possibility uh, as well. So what we're really focused on with teachers is building that capacity with distance learning so that if the virus does have a resurgence in the fall, uh, that we're able to transition to distance learning uh, and not have there be uh, you know, as big of an impact that we've done it before that we should be able to transition again. Um, so that's something that we're keeping an eye on. Um, of course, we know that there are likely gonna be impacts to student events, uh, particularly activities and athletics. Um, freshman orientation will probably have to be modified. Um, you know, things like football and uh, cross country and uh, girls volleyball, uh, which are fall sports, you know, we're going to have to look at that and compare them to the social distancing guidelines uh, or maybe run them without spectators. Um, so those are things that we're looking at. Um, two things I want you to keep in mind, though, for modifications to the to the fall. Um, one, they're going to be based on those social distancing guidelines from the governor and county public health. So we don't have those yet for August. So we're going to have to wait before we know what to decide. Um, and the second thing is, is that any modification to sort of the standard operating procedure of the school uh, has to be negotiated with the two bargaining units. Uh, so the district and the teachers union and the classified union uh, would negotiate what any of those modified schedules would look like, uh, similar to what was done with distance learning. Um, so once those two things happen, we would know sort of what fall semester is going to look like. But I just wanted to plant that seed for you now to let you know that it is on our radar and it's something that we're looking at um, as a possibility. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. You know, we can talk about it in future coffee chats. And of course, 
uh, as information becomes available, uh, we will share it. Um, so those are the big announcements that I had just in the first 10, 15 minutes of this presentation. Uh, please go ahead and type your questions in the chat. I'm going to be going through and answering your questions. So I see a few uh, have come in. So please just keep them coming. I promise I will answer everyone uh, as best as I am able. Uh, so I'm going to start in going through. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for saying good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, all right. First question. Ah, uh, good question. Good morning, uh, Madhavi. Uh, so just join. This might be a repeat. How and when can we expect to see progress report with the floor line grades, uh, mail and email? Uh, great question. Thank you. Uh, so I believe that the progress reports are going to be mail uh, as well as the electronic uh, way they've been done in the past. Uh, that's sort of a newer version, but I believe um, both ways. And I believe they will roll this afternoon. So you should see them within the next few days uh, for your progress report grade. Um, so stay, keep an eye on that uh, in terms of progress report grades. We have asked teachers for these progress report grades for the marking period five uh, to put the grade floor, that March 13th grade floor, as that grade. So that grade you see should be the floor and it should not um, go any lower. It should only rise. Uh, so expect that in the next few days. Uh, there's also gonna be a message on the progress report um, about the grade floor as well. Um, you know, it's interesting. Since that came up and since we have a minute, uh, I thought maybe we could chat a little about uh, pass, no pass versus the grade floor uh, or or San Francisco uh, thinking about giving everyone A's. Uh, you know, personally, I think that the approach that our district has taken which the Mar with the Mar March 13th grade floor, uh, excuse me, got a little tongue tied. I think that's the best one. And there's a few reasons for this. Um, the first reason is the grade floor um, honors the work that students have already done this semester. You know, if you go to pass, no pass, you don't really honor uh, that two and a half months of work and assignments that students have done. So I think the grade floor is a good idea in that area. Um, you know, it doesn't penalize students for distance learning. If they don't have access or technology or if home life is difficult, you know, the grade floor keeps the basement and it can only go up. Uh, whereas pass, no pass, you know, you could see an op uh, a situation in which a student ended up not passing a class um, because of an issue outside of their control, right? Their family got sick or their family lost their job and they lost their home. So there's some different things in play um, for why a grade floor is more equitable. Um, you know, another reason for a grade floor is that we know that the UC and CSU colleges have said that they're not going to penalize, um, you know, high school seniors for uh, any pass, no pass classes on their transcripts. But what we haven't heard and what, or at least what we haven't seen in writing as of a few days ago, um, to my knowledge, is the UC and CSU system, uh, not even counting private colleges, saying that they would take the same approach for underclassmen. So for our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, you know, if we move to pass, no pass, there's not really a guarantee, or at least I haven't seen a written guarantee, uh, that colleges would be okay with that, you know, in 2024, when a freshman uh, would be going into college. So keeping those GPAs intact and keeping those transcripts intact is a way just to protect our students, uh, you know, in the future who are not seniors right now. Um, so I, I just wanted to touch on that a little. You know, I'm, I've been reading the paper and seeing all sorts of, um, you know, there's some controversies in other districts. It was interesting. I was reading Palo Alto, uh, some stuff from their school district, Palo Alto Unified, and they cited our district uh, and the grade floor uh, as wanting that. Some students did. Uh, they're on pass, no pass. So I think everyone, all school uh, officials are trying to make the best decision they can. But I just wanted to take a minute and touch on uh, the grade floor. Um, why I think it's a good thing. You know, it's not ideal. Of course, in person's the best, but I think it's the best of the decisions that we had to make. Uh, so thank you for that question, uh, Ms. Gupta. All right, so I'm going on. Uh, please keep adding your questions. Please add your questions. All right, Brandon asks, uh, good morning, Mr. Kleckner. Which day of the week does Ms. Guban uh, sign the R40s? I emailed mine on Wednesday. Uh, so thanks for that question, Brandon. So R40s, uh, you know, the counselors right now are processing them as quickly as possible. Uh, this, I believe today is the deadline for priority registration for a couple of the community colleges. Uh, so they are processing them as quickly as possible and emailing those out. Um, I've already seen a couple emails this morning, uh, you know, going out with R40s. Uh, just keep in mind that the uh, Ms. Gubon was on campus yesterday um, printing out and uh, signing hundreds and hundreds of R40s. So sometimes it can take... Um, a while. Um, one of the cool things about Evergreen is that our students enrich themselves so much in the summer. Um, that just leads to a lot of paperwork that we have to, have to process. 
and it's a little more challenging and takes a little longer to do it remotely. Uh, so we typically hope for a week uh, turnaround for our 40s. Uh, you know, please reach out to Miss Gubon uh, if you haven't heard from her in a few days. Um, but she was signing hundreds of them uh, yesterday. So hopefully you will see from her uh, soon. Uh, so Brandon also asked, uh, I registered on the EVC website and have been waiting for the CWID. Uh, I haven't received it by email yet. Is it so supposed to arrive by email or does it appear on the EVC website somewhere? Um, you know, I, that I'm not sure of. You know, you may want to email your counselor uh, or Ms. Gubon with that question. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the specifics of, uh, of EVC and their processes. Um, it's been a few years since I was APD uh, and worked with that. Um, I would anticipate that it would come by email, though. I do know that um, EBC announced that all of their summer classes are going to be online only. Um, so it does look like uh, the R40s that we've been signing, you know, have been looking like they're for in-person classes. Uh, it does look like they're going to shift those over to online, uh, but that our students will still be able to participate. Uh, so thank you for that question, Brandon. If you don't hear anything about your R40 uh, in the next couple days, uh, please reach out to your counselor and... Uh, and Ms. Gabon. Uh, so Sam asked, uh, when can students get grade updates uh, for work since stay at home began? Uh, so great question. Uh, most teachers will use School Loop uh, for grade updates, but uh, teachers are tracking the distance learning in different ways. And so you're going to want to be very careful uh, in having assumptions about things because uh, I've seen some parents get very worried about distance learning grades, but it was a new grade book. So some teachers to keep track are using a second grade book. And if you see this grade book, you can see it starts on March 13th and then goes forward. So that's what teachers use to keep their school loop grade floor grade book intact. And then to keep track of distance learning uh, work is to separate them off like that. Um, but the simplest answer to um, how do you uh, know sort of what your student's grade floor is, the marking period five progress report that you will be getting within the next few days, uh, that is your grade floor grade. Um, updates for work they've been doing in distance learning, uh, you know, that will be on school loop uh, or whatever system your teacher is using, Google Classroom like that. So if you have a specific question, email your teacher. Uh, otherwise, keep an eye on school loop. You know, most of the teachers are using that for distance learning. So thank you, uh, Sam, uh, for that question. Uh, please, everyone, feel free to keep the questions coming. All right. Uh, Phyllis Lynn. Hello, Phyllis. Good morning. Uh, asks, when can students return textbooks? Great question. Uh, you know, there are two big things that are sort of on our radar for things that students need to return uh, this school year. Uh, one is uh, PE lockers. You know, we have to have students clean out their PE lockers before the end of the school year so they can have their belongings, so that we can clean the lockers over the summer, uh, and so they can be ready to go for when we return to school uh, in the fall. Uh, the second is textbooks. Now, PE lockers, we have a plan in place. Uh, we're going to be emailing uh, probably next week, maybe the week after, um, for students to sign up for specific windows of time uh, to come pick up and clean out their PE lockers. Um, you know, students are going to have to wear masks when they come on campus. We're only going to allow students one at a time uh, into the locker room uh, to do that. So it's going to take us several days uh, to get through uh, about half of our students, about 1,500 students, are enrolled in PE. Uh, so that's something that's on our radar that we are planning uh, for cleaning out the PE lockers. <laughs> now, I, I realize I, I answered sort of my question. I did answer your question uh, about textbooks. Uh, so textbooks is one that we're going to need some more time to think about on. Uh, and the reason why is, is that, uh, you know, we have 2,900 students that have textbooks versus 1,500 students with clothes and PE lockers. Uh, so it's sort of twice as big of a challenge for us to go through. Um, we've been working on some ideas, uh, you know, like a drive-through textbook return um, as well. You know, we do need to get the, the books back, though, before the fall. So it's not something that we can push off uh, into the summer uh, because we do have to get those books collected, uh, inventoried, uh, you know, pull out the books that are destroyed or damaged uh, and ready to go to check out, um, you know, to our new students and to new students when their courses change uh, in the fall. So I anticipate, you know, within the next couple weeks, we will be sending out uh, information on how students will be turning in their books. It's definitely going to look different uh, than in previous years, and it's going to look uh, socially distanced uh, as well. Um, so expect that in the next couple weeks. So for now, you know, hold on to those textbooks. We still got a month to go uh, with distance learning. 
Uh, but we're probably going to be looking at the end of May uh, as far as turning in textbooks. So keep an eye on School Loop. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for that question, Miss Lynn. Uh, everyone else, please keep the questions coming. Uh, KS, uh, good morning, KS. Uh, so his question, or her question, I don't know. So uh, their question, I will say, uh, what do we do with the cap and gown that we ordered? Uh, so good question. Uh, you know, Evergreen Valley, we do not sell uh, the caps and gowns. That's done by a private company, uh, the grad company. He, uh, Mr. Rabago, uh, sort of sells all those items. Uh, so at this point, caps and gowns, you know, what happens with those? Uh, it's going to have to wait uh, until we uh, know what's going to happen with graduation. So I would say all of that information, um, you know, about graduation that we're waiting for, you know, wait for that. Once we find out what's happening with graduation, we'll share, or Mr. Robago rather, from the grad company, uh, will share about caps and gowns. Uh, what I can tell you, what he's told the principals is, is if graduation ceremonies are canceled, you know, if we were not to have any sort of graduation ceremony, uh, he would do refunds of the caps and gowns. Uh, if we do have graduation ceremony, though, in some modified way, you know, the students obviously would need their caps and gowns for graduation. Um, so that's the information I have on caps and gowns. Uh, you know, whether the company will refund them will depend on uh, whether or not we have graduation, which we hope to have uh, in some fashion. So um, if you have any questions, I would email uh, the grad company or call them and ask. Um, but I do hope that we will have some sort of graduation ceremony. Uh, so you will need uh, those caps and gowns. But stay tuned uh, for information on that. So thank you, uh, KS, uh, for that question. All right, so I'm going down the list. Thank you, everyone, for your good mornings. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I see Sidhu uh, Rati. Uh, hopefully, you saw my answer um, regarding uh, textbooks. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. That was a little long answer uh, before. So Cliff Notes version of textbooks is just stay tuned. Uh, in the next week or two, we will send an email out regarding textbooks uh, and how to turn them in. We do need to get them in before the summer so we can inventory them. Uh, probably going to be some sort of drive-through slash drop-off uh, system. Uh, so just stay tuned to that as well. Uh, we'll get you that information. All right. I see. Thank you regarding the grade floor. Um, I, that, that's great. So I, I agree with the comments as far as the grade floor. I think it's good that students are allowed to, uh, you know, keep letter grades, but also not fall lower. You know, it ensures that equity and that fairness as well and make sure that our students are who are applying to college in 2022, 23 are still going to be solid and good to go. Um, so uh, another question, uh, could you please share the timeline for the final grade period? Uh, great question. Thank you. Um, so we are not going to have a final exam schedule uh, this year, either for seniors uh, or for any students. Uh, you know, typically we have in our um, spring semester, we have two final exam schedules. Uh, one for seniors, since we need senior grades a little early for graduation, uh, and then one for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. Um, because of distance learning this year, uh, there's not going to be any special final exam schedule. Uh, now, that means that doesn't mean teachers can't give finals. So teachers still may choose to give finals, uh, you know, provided they follow the distance learning rules. Uh, you know, a project or a presentation um, or maybe uh, a quiz using a special program can be a final but there's no special final schedule. Now, as far as um, final grades uh, getting entered, uh, typically that needs to be done uh, three uh, business days uh, after the end of the term. Uh, so what that means is on May 28th, that's a Thursday, um, that is the last day of school. Now, typically what you will have is, um, you know, teachers have a couple days, um, and I don't have the dates in front of me, so please forgive me, um, but teachers typically have a couple days to enter their grades. Uh, at the end of the term, uh, you know, because they have things to grade and things to input. Uh, and then they go out on progress reports. So I anticipate, you know, about a week or so, um, you know, after the end of the school year, you know, those final semester report cards will be going out uh, with the final grades. Now, something that we always get and a lot of parents um, and students often get concerned of is, you know, sometimes things happen or there are mistakes or there are errors or there's confusion or, you know, maybe a teacher forgot extra credit or something like that. And there's a lot of concern that, um, you know, once the summer hits that it's sort of set in stone and the grades can never be changed again. Well, just remember, teachers can always um, update grades that they can assign students. There's just a form that they have to fill out with the office to sort of explain why. So, you know, if, you know, a week, the grade comes out a week after we let off of school on May 28th and it's not the grade that you think it should be, 
Um, you know, the first step, of course, as always, is to email the teacher. You know, sometimes teachers are responding over the summer, uh, but teachers don't work in the summer, so they may not necessarily respond. Um, but don't worry. You know, you can contact myself or Ms. Guban, um, and then we will put it on our agenda for August, um, because just because the semester ended doesn't mean the grade can't be changed. Um, sorry, another long-winded answer, but to answer your question, final grades for the semester should come out around a week or so uh, after the end of the term, probably a couple days sooner. I'd say probably, you know, at the beginning of the week um, after we close uh, for the last day of school on May 28th. Uh, so thank you for that question. Uh, great question. All right. So Radha Bala is asking, uh, so I'm a little confused. The grade from the March 13th grade floor is the lowest grade the student will get on report card. Um, yeah, let, let me explain. I, I know it's kind of complicated. So the March 13th grade floor, whatever grade your student had at March 13th, including assignments that hadn't been graded yet that the teacher has since sort of put back in, you know, maybe assignments from the beginning of March, that's the lowest your grade can go. That's the grade floor. We wanted parents and everyone to know and for there to be an official record of what that grade floor was. So that's what's going to be on the progress report uh, coming out in the next few days. From that grade floor, your grade can only go up. It can only go up. It cannot go down from what the grade floor was. Um, so that's sort of the update on that. Your grade can go up through completion of distance learning. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, there are some students who ended up with A's as their grade floor. You know, that's great that they had A's at the beginning of the semester. They should know, though, that it's the expectation of the principal that they continue to do the distance learning work. Uh, and the reason why is, is because if they don't, they're going to be uh, in a challenging position when they go to the next level course next year or when they go off to college. So we're all at home. And so there's not really, uh, you know, unless there's an extenuating circumstance, students should be completing the work. Uh, but thank you for that question, Radha. I hope that helps answer uh, that question. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing anyone's name. A uh, uh, little difficult uh, virtually. Uh, so next question. Uh, uh, Nina, who I know uh, from Site Council, good to see you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kleckner. Do we have to go in person to EVC to submit an R40? Uh, is there a way to submit the signed R40 online or EVC? Uh, fantastic question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, what I'm going to say for that, if you go to our homepage, uh, ebhs.schoolloop.com, and then at the very top, there's um, that little button. We've talked about it before, the uh, distance learning newsletter button. If you click on that and go to our distance learning newsletter, uh, you'll see a, a tab for R40s. Uh, so you don't have to go uh, in person uh, to EBC, uh, and it can be done remotely, and you can email it. Uh, usually you will um, take the R40 from EBC, uh, it's on their website, uh, print it out and complete it and sign it and then send that to your counselor and your counselor will process it as well and then we'll do it all remotely and return it back to you. So please go to that, um, the distance learning newsletter uh, and be sure to uh, follow those instructions and you can do it all remotely from home. Uh, you shouldn't have to go to EBC uh, or to... Uh, or come into Evergreen Valley. Uh, we do accept drop-offs of R40s, though. If, if that works better for you, you can drop them off at the 12 to 1 lunch distribution, and we'll get it to your counselor. But email is the easiest way uh, to do that. So uh, details on how to do it is on the distance learning newsletter. Uh, next question. Uh, Radha is asking, oh, sorry, what's an R40? So great question. Uh, I'm sort of like bad teacher, Mr. Kleckner. I didn't scaffold and provide the foundation uh, to that discussion. Uh, I don't know what the R40 or if there's any uh, significance to the letter or the numbers, uh, but basically, I suppose you can call it a concurrent enrollment form. It's essentially a permission slip that students need uh, to take classes at community colleges. Uh, most of our students take community college classes at Evergreen Valley College, but there are many other colleges like De Anza and Foothill that our students take classes at as well. So the R40 form is the form that the college requires uh, to be completed by the school so that a student can take community college classes uh, in high school. We do have some rules around our 40s and what classes you can and can't take and how many uh, that your counselor will be able to share. Um, so great question. Uh, thank you uh, for asking that. Uh, next question from uh, Gita. Uh, what about yearbook? Uh, great question. So we are going to have a yearbook this year. So yearbooks uh, that were ordered, uh, you know, will be uh, delivered to students uh, and will be sent to students. Uh, you know, in the past couple of years, uh, the company we've used for the yearbook 
uh, mail to the yearbook, I believe, home already. So we're going to keep doing that. Um, our yearbook committee in our ASB uh, has been finalizing the yearbook. Uh, they've been adding some, uh, you know, tributes uh, for, um, you know, distance learning, uh, you know, updating the yearbook to reflect just how the year went crazy uh, in the last uh, sort of one fourth of the year. You know, a memorial for, um, you know, our English teacher, Mr. Vandenhuevel, who passed away, is in the yearbook. So uh, as well as we're trying to you know, add things for our seniors to make them feel appreciated. Uh, so there will be a yearbook as normal. Uh, you know, the only change is the content of what's in the yearbook. Uh, not really as far as, you know, canceling or anything like that. Uh, so thank you for that question, Gita. Uh, Janet Lee, good morning, Janet asks, uh, how will PE classes be conducted in the fall? You know, that's a great question. Um, and that's one I'm going to, I'm going to kind of have to uh, defer that and say, let's wait and see. Um, on that. So we're going to have to wait and see what the guidelines from the governor's office and from the county public health office are for social distancing when we get to August. Um, you know, it's obviously something that we're thinking about PE classes, um, some of our performing art classes, and of course, things like break and lunch uh, and, and, you know, passing in the hallways and things like that. So I'm going to have to say stay tuned for an update. You know, we are taking our guidance from the county and from the state. Um, and they're just not that far out yet. They don't have that sort of three months out. It's going to look like that. Uh, things are just changing really fast. Um, you know, as you guys know, day by day. Um, so we don't know yet, but it's definitely on our radar, uh, you know, for PE classes. Um, it is important to remember, though, you know, PE is a requirement uh, from the state. So there is a two-year requirement for PE. Uh, so there's going to have to be some sort of decision made on how we do that, you know, whether, you um, you know, you have students not change for PE, so they're just outside the whole time. Uh, that would be a really easy way to mitigate it, but then you're not able to get into the curriculum and exercise uh, as much. Uh, so it's definitely something we're going to have to look at and consider. It's just a little early right now uh, to be able to say for sure uh, what PE is going to look like in the fall. Uh, but thank you for asking that question. I would say keep asking that question, so, you know, as we have these the next few months. Uh, and then at, at one point, there will be an answer uh, where we'll tell you, you know, this is what we're going to do to keep students safe uh, for PE. Uh, so thank you for that question, Janet. All right, so uh, Anuleka, Anuleka Chodi asks, grade floor is a great idea, but some teachers have made grades have made floor grades as 75% of semester grades. It'll be very difficult for students to improve grade with distance learning work as they only get a maximum of 25% credit for the semester. Um, so here's the deal with the grade floor. So the grade floor says your grade cannot fall any lower than what that grade is. So if I have an 85% uh, on March 13th, that 85% is the minimum my grade can be. Now, grades going up are still a possibility, absolutely. Um, now, just like when schools are in session, though, um, how grades go up is going to be at the discretion of the teacher. So one teacher, you know, may say, you know, do this one gigantic comprehensive project, uh, and that's what I'm going to accept for raising grades. And it's something that takes weeks to complete. And then you submit it at the end. And then I grade it. And that's your opportunity to raise your grade. Uh, you know, some of our teachers are continuing on with Zoom lessons uh, and taking in homework uh, very similar to like it was when school was in session. And so grades are rising that way. Um, some teachers are averaging grade books where they say that, um, you know, I have all of my distance learning stuff in this grade book. And then you have your March 13th grade floor. And at the end, I'm going to look at the two and you get the higher of the two or I average. And if it averaged out higher, um, that's the grade you get. Um, and we're not doing one size fits all with that because courses are just so different, right? Um, what you get for a PE grade is different from a choir grade, is different from a calculus grade, is different from a United States history uh, grade, right? So there needs to be flexibility of how students raise their grades um, when it comes to different courses. But the non-negotiable, though, uh, is that grades will not fall lower from where they are on March 13th. Uh, they can only go up uh, from what students have on that grade floor that will be on this progress report. Uh, so thank you for that question. Uh, next question. These are awesome questions. So you guys are doing fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Radha asks, uh, what if current grades are lower than March 13th? Um, the official March 13th grade floor grade uh, is going to be on the marking period period five progress report. That's really what you should look at and not school loop because teachers are keeping track of distance learning in school loop and it's going to be different from teacher to teacher. So the official record of the grade floor is at the um, 
the March is on the progress report grade. Now, if you're looking in school loop and the grade's lower, or if you think you have a March 13th grade that was a B, and when the progress reports comes out, it was a C, um, the first step is to email your teacher and ask, um, you know, hey, what's up? Is this an error? You know, everyone makes mistakes. Teachers are human. Uh, so that's a possibility. And then they can fix it. Now, if you have a teacher that says, I'm doing something special and I'm choosing a grade floor is going to be X and not actually what you had on March 13th, uh, then let Ms. Guban or myself know. Uh, and we'll follow up with that teacher. Um, but again, the best place to look for that grade floor is going to be on the progress report. We have told our teachers to put the grade floor grade on the progress report for marking period five. So there's an official record. And so it's clear to students and families. Uh, if you think there is some discrepancy when you get that progress report grade for the grade floor, uh, reach out to the teacher, uh, reach out to administration, and we can figure out what's going on and try to help. So thank you for that question. Uh, Anuleka Chodi uh, asks, is there any recommended way or grading percentages or uh, of floor grade and distance learning grade? Distant learning, approximately 35% to 40% of semester days, I think. So we're not saying that the distance learning grade has to make up a specific chunk of um, students' grades. And the reason why is, is that we really want um, you know, grades not to be punitive or not to be stressful or cause undue anxiety for students. Um, it's a really difficult time for students, for teachers. Um, we really want folks to focus on continuity of instruction, you know, getting ready for uh, next school year and the courses that you'll be taking next school year, as well as practicing self-care, you know, making sure that students are taking care of themselves. And because of the differences between courses, uh, you know, we can't do a one size fits all of, you know, you have to do it this specific way. Um, what is non-negotiable though, is that grade floor and that grades can go up. Uh, it's just going to look different from teacher to teacher. Um, as usual, just because courses are um, incredibly different in the content and how they offer it. Um, so thank you for that question. Uh, and please keep them coming. I'm almost uh, I'm almost to the end. So please keep those questions coming. Uh, Cor Cora Day asks, our drama teacher, Ms. Shank, uh, took a leave and I haven't heard from her class, but it seems as if there are no new or upcoming assignments for the class. So what should I do? Um, so Ms. Shank, uh, she chose to uh, leave Evergreen Valley. So it's she's okay, but she uh, uh, left Evergreen Valley. So she's not a teacher um, at EV anymore. You know, it was nothing bad, nothing like that. She just uh, chose sort of, um, you know, made a personal decision uh, for herself to leave before all of the COVID-19 stuff happened. Um, we had placed in drama class um, a long-term substitute. Uh, Mr. Tarber, uh, who is also one of our uh, coaches and who also has um, a lot of theater arts and drama experience, he was the long-term substitute in drama class before we closed uh, for the pandemic. And Mr. Tarber is still teaching the class uh, through distance learning. Um, so he should be posting assignments and there should be assignments uh, being done. Um, please go ahead and take a look on School Loop, your School Loop locker, um, your School Loop email, your Google Classroom. Uh, we set Mr. Tarver up uh, for those um, drama class, so he should be providing instruction. Um, so drama class is one where we have a, um, a long-term sub in there. Uh, Ms. Honea's AP Lit classes, uh, you know, she is on a, uh, a medical leave. We have a long-term sub in there, Mr. Schwabe. Uh, and then Mr. Vandenhuevel's classes, um, who we know unfortunately passed away, um, you know, we have a substitute in there, Mr. Torres. So all of our classes are covered uh, by staff. So if you're not seeing anything for drama, something's going on, because I know he's provided work. So check School Loop, check your School Loop locker, check your Google Classroom, check your email. If you still don't find anything, send me an email uh, on School Loop or to my Gmail, and, and I can help, because uh, I know that there's instruction going on. Uh, so thank you, uh, Cora. Uh, next question. Uh, Phyllis, are all EBC courses free for high school students? You know, I'm not 100% sure. I think so, or I think that there's a small fee. Um, I, I, I see a lot of our PTA parents uh, in the chat. Anyone who sent a student to EBC, if you can confirm they're free or there's a nominal fee, that'd be great. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Uh, I don't know if we have any counselors uh, in our chat right now. Uh, they are the pros on uh, community colleges just because there are so many and have so many different courses. Um, I do think it's affordable uh, for sure, free or affordable to do community college classes. Um, and I, I want to say it's free because there's a requirement that 
uh, you know, they can't take um, more than a certain percentage of high school students to their courses because, um, of course, they have to have enough spots for college students as well. Um, so sorry, I don't know the uh, all of the answers on that. All right. So next question uh, from Anant. Is the report mailed out? Uh, yes, I believe the progress report is still mailed. Um, Parents, tell me in the chat or chime in in the chat if uh, you got one for the fourth marking period. It would have come around probably the third or fourth week of February. Uh, but I do believe that progress reports are mailed and I believe they're emailed a digital copy as well. So I believe you're getting two copies from that. Uh, someone in the chat, please correct me um, if I'm wrong on that. But I believe those are the two ways that they go out. Now, if for some reason you changed your address or, and you didn't tell us, which please tell us if you change your address so we can mail you things, it's important. Um, or, you know, something happened, your mail's getting stolen, anything like that. You can always email your counselors and just ask, hey, can you tell me what my marking period five grades are? Or email me. It's super easy for us to pull up uh, and send to you by email. Um, but give it a week. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but my mail has been coming a little slower lately. Um, but they should be mailed and or uh, emailed as well. So thank you for that question. All right, still going down. Da, da, da. So Khan asks, uh, I've submitted a Google form for my student to take a math analysis class over the summer. Uh, so that's a Math 25 course that we're partnering with EVC on. Uh, and then Khan says, the counselor said you don't need an R40. Is this correct? I think you said earlier, math analysis at EBC will be online. Um, go with what your counselor uh, told you. Uh, so counselors are the experts for that. Math 25, um, which is that math analysis course, Math 25 is the community college, uh, sort of what they call it. Um, that one's slightly different than all the other community college courses. Uh, and the reason is, is that that Math 25 course is technically considered dual enrollment. Um, so it's actually a partnership between Evergreen Valley High School and Evergreen Valley College. Uh, where we have a college professor uh, teach a class that's like a high school class. It's kind of complicated. You don't really need to know all that. Just know that it's a little different than the typical community college class. Um, so if you if your counselor said you don't need an R40 for that class and you signed up on it uh, for it, you should be good. Um, but feel free to email Ms. Gubon or your counselor just to double check. But if your counselor told you that, you should be safe. Uh, and the reason is, is because that Math 25 um, you know, to give you an example, we had five sections of that dual enrollment course last year uh, for math analysis, math 25. Uh, it's just a little different because it's considered a different category since it's a partnership rather than us sending students to the community college to take that class.